welcome to the DC Today Fed Day Wednesday, and this is a very strange location. I'll actually post a picture on social media because I'm at the uh, Delta Airlines, you know, Sky Club or whatever they call it here at the Minneapolis airport, and I had several client Zooms and calls, um, a lot of writing, a lot of reading, portfolio work, and I have a flight, you know, near at the end of the day, and so in this sky club they have this uh like a phone booth it's an overgrown phone booth where you can get privacy close a door have a table have power just kind of set up a little mini office and and um it's quite a, a scene i've spent an awful lot of my life in airports and yet to go uh plug into something like this all afternoon and work and in fact recorded dc today is a first in terms of uh doing something like DC Today from a venue like this. So I'll look forward to being back in the studio in the Newport Beach office tomorrow. Um, but uh, the Fed didn't do anything surprising at all today. Uh, raised rates a quarter point, as was expected. Right now, futures are pricing a 91% chance that there will not be any more rate hikes from here. Of course, that could change, but that's where things stand now. Um, I did listen to all of Jay Powell's press conference, the chairman of the Federal Reserve, and there were no big surprises. He mostly talked. They changed language in their release. Um, and they made more references to the lags of monetary policy, which sort of indicates, hey, we may, we may need to give time to see if there's going to be a lag effect in the economy from the tightening we've already done. Uh, but, of course, they did maintain their language about we really want to stomp out inflation and make sure we don't um, – ease monetary policy too soon either. So they said all the right things, uh, the things you would expect them to say. Um, markets didn't move at all. They were up a little bit for the first like 45 minutes. And then as has been the case, pretty much every time we've had one of these pressers, then in the final half hour of trading, you get a lot of sell off from, I think, some of the short term phenomena. Um, and that's what happened. Uh, today, Dow ended up dropping uh, what was it here? 270 points, 0.8%. The S&P was down 0.7%. The NASDAQ was down almost 0.5%. Big rally in bonds. And so, again, there's that contradiction where the bond market uh, loved it and is, is pricing in lower rates longer term. The 10-year is all the way back down to 3.35%. The 10 year is down 8.7 um, basis points today alone. And obviously now down all, not quite 100, but 90 basis points from its high of where it was, you know, just months ago. Um, not exactly pricing in entrenched inflation. Oil is continuing to sell off. Fears on global demand definitely lower than expected demand on diesel. Um, actually, inventories and stockpiles, I would have expected. Uh, a little different response on today versus yesterday. But I, I think that all of that right now is highly cyclical and volatile. ISM services came in a little bit better than expected. But again, what is this now? The fifth month in a row, perhaps fourth month in a row of expansion. New orders in particular had picked up. Um, and then the ADP private sector payrolls report indicated 296,000 new jobs created in April. But of course, we have the BLS, the real... Bureau of Labor Statistics jobs report that will come on Friday. And there's been quite a growing disconnect some months, not last month, but some months between ADP and BOS. Um, in the dctoday.com today, we have two questions in the Ask David. One about our take on debt ceiling brinkmanship. Are we fearful? Do we think there's a, a black swan event? Uh, how do we want to market time around Maybe low probability, but high impact type events. And and I will simply say that every day of your life as an investor and as a human being is a uh, low probability, high impact event every day. It's always out there. It's a perpetual reality. And uh, no, we do not believe in getting in front of something, particularly something that has seven or eight different precedents that proved to be nothing. And then when people constantly bring up summer 2011, where we did go to the brinkmanship, they did have a standoff between then Speaker Boehner and then President Obama, and the market dropped 10%. And I just want to point out two things that first of all, at that exact point in time, literally Europe was falling in the economic ocean, total default 
uh, solvency fears for Portugal, Italy, Ireland, Greece, Spain. Um, and then the notion of saying at the same time you had the debt default creating credit rating things going on in the United States. Uh, we most certainly never missed a principal or an interest payment on debt, and we never even got close to doing so. And that is held up as the big standard of cats and dogs falling out of the sky. And what did the S&P do? Uh, did it drop 10, 11% in July, August? Yes, it did. What did it do September through the rest of the year? It went up 20%. So we don't believe these things can be timed, should be timed. Uh, we don't even know what we would be timing. Um, who, you know, what Kevin McCarthy says on Fox and then what Joe Biden says on MSNBC. I mean, uh, you know, do I believe that they are the end result of this, um, that along the way there'll be brinksmanship and elevated volatility? Yes, I do. Yes, I do. Do I believe in the end that the entire economy will tank um, and the United States will default on a treasury bond because of this. No, I do not. And so, therefore, we have the view within the portfolio that the notion of acting as if a low probability, high impact event is actionable is a very bad idea. So I will leave it there. There is another question in the Ask David as well. I will be back with you tomorrow from California uh, doing another DC Today as markets continue to never sleep. Thank you so much for listening, watching, and reading the DC Today. Mm -hmm.